Um, so next up we have uh, Jake Horowitz. Uh, Jake is a co-founder, editor, and chief at policymike.com, which is the voice of our generation. And I think he means his generation, <laughs> my generation, depressingly. Um, and uh, apparently, based on your Twitter, that you've actually met Obama. So, <laughs> so anyway, thanks, Jake. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. Um, really inspired by Joey and Laura, and really excited to be here today. Um, my name is Jake Horowitz. I co-founded and I'm the editor-in-chief of PolicyMike.com, which is the uh, new, uh, news site for young people online. We've reached 14 and a half million uniques. Um, here to share a few lessons about our growth and what I've learned about the way my generation consumes news and the way it's very different than our parents' generation. Um, so first things first, I'm what the media would call a Millennial, um, born in 1987. I grew up on the internet. I use Facebook and Twitter. Uh, is this thing working? It was. Well, anyway, uh, grew up on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and uh, if you ask the media, I'm also uh, lazy, narcissistic, self-absorbed, part of the me, me, me generation. Uh, I think I live at home with my parents. I, I'm a taker. You name it, um, but uh, but but truthfully, I've been interested in journalism my whole life uh, and telling the stories that matter to my generation. And you know, over the last several years, have noticed three really, really, really important shifts in the way that young people consume news and information. Um, so, let's see if this is moving. There we go. So there's the millennials, uh, the, the lazy people I talked about. Um, and there we go. Um, so three major shifts in the way that young people consume, consume news and information. So number one, uh, you know, embedded in this stereotype about millennials is that, you know, we're, we're, we're absorbed on our phones. We're only concerned about light and fluffy and entertaining news. We don't have the capacity, because we're always on mobile, to care about really important and serious topics. Um, I can say that that's absolutely couldn't be further from the case. Um, and that you know, legacy media outlets have failed to reach this ge generation, not because we don't care about news, but because we're looking for a very different format, tone, sensibility, angle, voice than our parents are, and legacy ma outlets have been focused on, uh, on our parents. Um, you know, whether it's the crisis in Ukraine or presidential elections, young people care about real topics, and PolicyMic is providing them with a platform and a voice to talk about real important issues. Um, so that's number one. Number two, uh, you know, the homepage is absolutely dead for this generation. Um, you know, I can honestly remember when I was back in college, being the uncool kid at the table. You know, I was the reading the physical New York Times and. Uh, you know, there was a major shift back then where you know, young people started going to online news sites, and we've seen a major shift in the last several uh, in the last several years where you know now it's no longer about online news sites, but it's about Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, Vine, and sort of capturing the way and uh, capturing young people in the feeds and uh, where we're getting our news. And so you know, it sounds so obvious, but I can't tell you how many people I talk to who don't really understand that you know a news site today is only as good as its distribution channels and the way that it captures young people in those feeds. Uh, so that's two. And, and three, um, you know, if there's one thing I know about my generation, and Joey alluded to this as well, it's that we are incredibly distrustful of mainstream media, of corporations, of institutions. You know, we've been lied to one too many times and looking for a very, very different type of coverage. You know, stories that you're not hearing in the rest of the mainstream media. Um, you know, if there's one person who's done this incredibly well for my generation, it's, it's John Stewart, who you know he's been successful because he's funny, uh, but also because you know he calls out BS for what it is. And no matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican or a conservative outlet or a liberal outlet, you know he's going to point out uh, uh, you know where you're 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 wrong and give you a, a, a type of news that feels more authentic and real for our generation. 
Um, so having said all that, enter Policy Mike. Uh, you know, two and a half years ago, I teamed up with lifelong friend Chris Alchek uh, with the simple belief that mainstream media can do a lot more to empower my generation to have smart conversations about topics that really matter. Uh, it, it's been really, really exciting. Um, over the last two and a half years, we've grown, uh, last year we grew by 650% and now reach over 14 and a half million young people. Um, got big plans for this year as well. Uh, you know, we're focused on telling the stories that matter to our generation and, you know, so far I've done that in politics and arts and entertainment and entrepreneurship. You know, plans to diversify the scope of our coverage this year into books and sports and all kinds of areas. Um, also to depthen our coverage, so we're going to be sort of telling stories through data visualizations and infographics and graphics and r figuring out creative ways to tell stories that matter, uh, that resonate with our audience. Uh, so that's all in the works for this year and, and, and you know, I'm excited to do Q&A and take questions, but we'll just sort of show a few examples of, you know, how these three lessons have materialized in practice. So, you know, here we go with one of our pieces that we published on Ukraine. Um, you know, again, I, on the first point, idea that young people don't care about Ukraine, it's just totally not true. Um, and, you know, we published this piece to understand what's really happening in Ukraine, follow the gas lines on the map. And, you know, important here, there was a, that, that sort of explainer feel where we're breaking down a really complicated news topic for young people, you know, sort of walking them through, uh, you know, uh, point by point that there's a narrative here that most of the mainstream media probably hasn't told you. This was one of our most shared and, and, and viewed and discussed pieces on our site. Um, here's a piece uh, that we published during the Olympics. Uh, you know, we all, I'm sure, uh, know the Sochi problems hashtag, which was going viral. Maybe some of us were tweeting it uh, when we were there. You know, this was a piece that, you know, sort of on the point of reaching people in their feeds and understanding Facebook and Twitter, you know, we inserted ourselves into a conversation that was happening on Twitter, which was quite humorous and funny and lighthearted and said, you know, wait a minute here. Uh, you know, there was actually real problems happening in, 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 in Sochi, you know, on the human rights and corruption and LGBT rights front. And so this was a nice counter narrative. Uh, again, one of our most viewed uh, shared and discussed pieces. Um, and, and finally, you know, here was a piece where, you know, I, I mentioned it, you know, young people are fed up with corporations and, and politicians and there's a skepticism here. And so here was one of our pieces which, you know, talked about sort of the illusion of choice and the fact that there's a handful of corporations that actually control essentially everything that young people buy. Again, shared, viewed, and discussed pieces. So. Um, Hopefully, you know, uh, we can dig into those three things in the Q&A, and, and I'm really excited to, to talk further, and thank you.